my mom and my grandma actually were the ones who said this to me, don't make eating a battle of wills. So I'm not gonna sit there and stomp my foot and say, you are gonna eat this right now. Because then it becomes about resisting me, not about resisting the food. Right. And so I, I put it out there. I try to get her to taste it. All. I will say, you know, have one bite, have one bite, have one bite. But I'm not, at the end of the day, if tonight's just not the night and she just wants, you know, cereal with milk, I'm not going to wear that like a cloak of shame. And I'm also not going to make it a big deal. Because if I don't make it a big deal and all she sees is John and I enjoying that meal, tomorrow she might want to try it. Or the next day she might, the, whenever it is that she decides she wants to be part of the adult conversation, the adult, the adult dinner table, she's going to want to try that. And so I think we try to lead by example and make the, you know, the items that we want her to eat available widely and offer her many opportunities to try them and then let her come to the table a little bit. I remember when we first opened Del Posto 12 years ago, and in, in our family, it was never weird to try anything, and we never made a big deal of it. Like, if, if the parsnips were brand new, we just passed the parsnips. We never said, it's a parsnip, you're going to like this thing, it's strange, but whatever. So I'll never forget when we had something called chibreo, which is a Tuscan stew served with pasta that's made of the regalie of the chicken or the duck, which means all of the things that they give you including the, the gizzards, gizzards, the, the heart, heart, the testicles, the uh, wattle. And at, at the age waddle? like the, yeah, the little the gobbler? figgly thing. <laughs> um, and when people would ask Leo what his favorite thing to eat was when he was like 13, he would say, <laughs> duck testicles. 